So Mitch, here we are. It's f the weekend's finally come where the book and everything comes out. And we've already had quite a morning at uh, Lakewood. What'd you think of that? Um, I have no way to put into words what happened other than to be able to say God did something to bring high school students on Restoration Road in a way that nobody could contrive. Mm -hmm. And he did it through someone's story. Yeah, yeah Mackenzie, who we'll see on the, the broadcast later. I mean, I think the power of sharing someone else's story through like your journey has been a really cool thing to see. Um, maybe tell us a little bit why you believe the message of Restoration Road is so important for this culture. Well, I think the need for restoration is universal and basically from Genesis, Genesis 3 on, uh, the Bible's about restoration. And um, I, my own experience and my study of the Bible just tells me there's this longing in each one of our hearts to live um, with authenticity, to reflect the design of the designer. And we all think that we're going to restore ourselves from the outside in. That's pretense. Um, if I just do this or go there, then I'm going to be somebody. And God's design is that life happens from the inside out. So we have to uh, be willing and with all four chambers of our hearts, with our desires, uh, to surrender those to Him as a restorer. And then He just transforms everything. That's awesome. I have my questions because I've, I've been wanting to ask these questions for a long time since we've been working on the book. Um, what do you hope people will gain from the book? I know we've you know, just experienced a little glimpse of that with Lakewood, but just as it comes out, like as we've talked, it's, just, it's more than a project. But what's the hope that you have that people will walk away with? I would pray that people would walk away um, with a desire to walk Restoration Road, uh, that they would fully surrender their hearts, their desires, their three resources of life, their time, talent, and treasure. Uh, to the restore, to the only one who can make things new. And um, we, we write about it in the book, you know, there's, there's two kinds of pride. Um, and they're pictured in sand and stone. Mm -hmm. uh, stone is, is legalism. It, it's, uh, it's a hard heart that needs to be chiseled out. It's made rules, regulations, stipulations, and it focuses on God at the expense of relationship with other people. And uh, that's religion, that's legalism. Like I said, we're trying to manipulate the deity of the universe. Well, the other kind of pride is sand and it's, it's loose and, and licentious and just kind of scattered in the wind. It's a little bit like whatever, man. And it focuses on people and relationships and tasks at the expense of God, kind of shuts God out of that. The irony of that is, is that uh, sand and stone are really the same substance. Sand is just broken up pieces of stone and there's little areas in a sand heart where they have rules and regulations and stipulations, but in both cases, uh, their uh, pride, pretense, and an attempt at outside-in self-restoration. But what I would hope people would walk away with is a clay heart. Mm -hmm. uh, it gets it, it comes from the ground, and it knows that it only has value if it's malleable in the hands of the potter. And two science teachers told me that clay uh, sand and stone would rate the same on the element table, but clay by water has been ground finer mm -hmm. and it will actually hold water and we use that as imagery in the book for uh, what the Bible calls water is the Spirit of God. Mm -hmm. So that's my prayer is that somebody would, would fully surrender his heart, desires, and three resources of life to the restore, walk Restoration Road, <clears throat> and be used to um, be used by God for him to restore others. Mm -hmm. As we were working on the book together, was there one story or one illustration through the book that surprised you that you actually put that in the book that you walked away with? Do you have that answer in mind already? No, but I'm, I'm, it's a question I've been wondering because, you know, when we started, we weren't really sure what the book was going to be. Mm -hmm. And it was really kind of telling your story and just what God brought, you know, the the place he brought you to. And sometimes, like we saw this morning at Lakewood, you know, through a person's story, you hear other people's stories and they're sharing stuff that they may never have thought they would share with anybody. 
Well, the first thing that comes to my mind is an auction scene that I had no idea that I would look back on and say, you know, that had a huge spiritual impact in my life. And uh, it, uh, I was in a in a an auction family business, and the the bar was set high to excel, and so I became the youngest licensed auctioneer uh, in the nation when I was 18 years old. I was the youngest licensed realtor, and I uh, was conducting my first auction with Grandpa Russell in uh, uh, Butler, Indiana, on the front porch of a house as the cars would drive by on that two-lane highway that runs through Butler, and two or three hundred people were in, in the front yard. And I was auctioning this curio cabinet. Mm -hmm. And I knew that the mark of a good auctioneer was that you got that thing sold, uh, so you weren't giving away things at the end. You had to keep the auction moving. So I go, $100, $200, anybody else? And he goes, stop, wait, wait, stop. <laughs> I thought, what are you doing? I said, yes. And uh, Grandpa Russell says, is there anything else you can say about this? that might make them bid more money. Mm. And this is loud, like I got the microphone in my hand, they're hearing everything he says, all two, 300 people are coming into our personal conversation on the job training at its mm. finest. So I said, well, uh, the wood, it's, it's beautiful, it's hand carved. <laughs> he says, Mitchell, don't tell me, <laughs> tell them. Mm. So I looked at him and I repeated everything I said. I said, oh, look at the wood, it's beautiful, it's hand carved, how could you replace it today? 300, 400 dollars, 500. And he goes, Mitchell, wait, wait, stop. And I go, yes. <clears throat> Is there anything else you could tell them to make it more, to make them bid more money? They might want to bid more. And I said, well, the, 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 uh, the beveled glass, look at the beveled glass. And uh, he says, <clears throat> don't tell me, tell them. So I said, look at the beveled glass. How could you even afford to do that today? 500, 600, 700, anybody else? Mitchell, stop. He goes, <clears throat> this is working pretty well. <laughs> and uh, he said, is there anything else you could say? I said, well, look at the feet, the hand carved feet. I go, I know, don't tell you, tell them. And the whole crowd's laughing now, and I'm saying, 700, 800, 900, 1,000, anybody else? And I look at him in the corner of my eye, and I say, can I sell it now? He says, yes. I said, sold, $900, <laughs> you know, or whatever it was. It might have been even 1,000. Perfect time. If we pick it up from here, they can grab it. Mm -hmm. I was pausing anyway, so can I just? Yes. Could you? Uh, that one, right? I, I was kind of enjoying the ceiling pounds. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, so maybe if you went to the place where you looked at it and said, I, I, can I sell it now? Mm -hmm. Actually repeat it, maybe? Yeah, just pick up, yeah, repeat that. Okay. So I, uh, I look at him in the corner of my eye and I said, can I sell it now? And he said, yes. And I said, sold $900, you know, or and maybe it was a thousand. I, I, I don't know, but I, 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 I know this. What I didn't share with you is on the way up in those conversations, he told me something that changed my life and we ended up entitling a chapter of this. And he says, Mitchell, if I can get you convinced I can get them convinced. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what God's saying to each one of us. I think we're, we're just hammering away at these self-restoration attempts on our lives. And he's saying, look, if I could get you con convinced, I could get others convinced. Mm -hmm. And here we are selling it like I was. We're selling out our lives for 100, 200, when God intended, you know, five, tenfold, whatever it is. And uh, we we have to be willing to surrender our heart desires in life to the restorer so that he will use us to restore others. And I think we saw a little bit of that this morning with Blakewood, you know, at the high school. And, and you know, the book, and then it turned into the study guide and DVD. And, you know, I think, I think both our prayers is that people will use this, not just read the book and put it on a shelf somewhere, but you'll actually take that ne next step and make the changes in your life towards restoration. And it's, you know, I'm, I'm so excited for the book coming out and for being able to be a, a, a part of it. And, you know, even in my own life, walking through that, you know, it's even helped me restore things in my life that I didn't intend on having that happen when we were writing, because, you know, but, 
He's lost 17 oh, pounds. Oh, no, yeah. He, he trains with the trainer of the stars. He's now <laughs> ripped. People ask him if he's Jason Stratham. Is that right? Oh, he my gets gosh. stopped. He gets, he gets notes on his windshield. All kinds of things are happening now. Yeah, well, and we'll, we'll see how much of that makes it on the webcast. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so anyway, um, yeah, I'm excited for it. And, you know, I think God's got big things in store. I think he's going to use your story to really change the lives of of so many others high schoolers college age adults i think we're going to see the full gamut so i hope so